Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Our guest today is the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan. He joins us from his home in Lahore nearly two weeks after being shot at during a rally against the government in the town of Wazirabad. Thank you very much. Pleasure, Mark. Mr. Khan, uh, after the attack, the alleged gunman was arrested and confessed. He said he, that he had acted on his own and for religious reasons. But you believe the real culprits are the Prime Minister, Shabazz Sharif, his interior minister, and a senior official of the Inter-Services Intelligence, the ISI. Nearly two weeks later, is this what you still vividly believe? Mark, look, three and a half years I was the Prime Minister. The intelligence agencies worked under me. So I know how they operate. I know exactly what happened. I predicted this almost six weeks ago when they first uh, accused me, a video film was made accusing me of blasphemy. And then it was picked up by these uh, government spokesperson, by the government controlled television. And I, six weeks ago, I said that this was all planned to assassinate me through a religious fanatic. And uh, the two, uh, Prime Minister and the uh, Interior Minister, who I named, we know their past for 30 years. Both have been involved in extrajudicial killing. Both were involved in what is called the Model Town Massacre, where they had th 12 protesters shot dead and about 60 injured. So we know the past. So therefore, I'm, I know that whenever there is an, an independent investigation, I know the people behind this attack were these three guys, and this decoy was this uh, supposedly relig religious fanatic who actually isn't a religious person because people know his background. Journalists went and exposed his background. So this was all a setup. So uh, you've talked about a probe. The prime minister who condemned uh, the attack has formally requested the chief justice to form a judicial commission to probe the attack. This is exactly what you want. And I believe you trust that the chief justice will indeed go uh, wherever he needs to go to find the truth. That's true. We, I have asked the Chief Justice uh, to have an independent probe under him. We know there were two gunmen because uh, the decoy was this one gun, gunman who admitted that it was on, for religious reasons he had shot me. But we know that there was another gunman sitting in the front. Uh, so uh, I know that an independent probe is, is going to prove what I'm saying is right, that this was a planned assassination attempt and who gained the most from it were these, was this government. Because the, the parties, my party, since I have been ousted from power, it has grown. It has won 75% of the by-elections. So they are petrified that if there are elections, we will win. That's why they wanted to be eliminated. Right, but you, you say an independent probe would prove what you're saying. But the question is, do you believe the Chief Justice will be able to conduct such a probe? Or are you saying, I don't believe because uh, of what you're saying regarding the government, the military, the intelligence, that might not have an interest uh, for such an in independent probe? You see, the investigating agencies are under these three people who I've named. The Interior Minister, Prime Minister and this uh, uh, intelligence agency officer. So I, under them, there is no question of me getting uh, uh, what I think is a proper investigation. Therefore, I've asked the Chief Justice, and he must form his own team. And he should pick his own team of, uh, from various uh, uh, departments, intelligence agencies, and it should work under the Chief Justice. That's the only way there is a hope of me getting uh, justice. Uh, Mr. Khan, uh, uh, a few uh, weeks uh. before uh, the uh, assassination attempt against you, uh, the chief of the ISI, in a very unusual move, uh, spoke to reporters. Uh, he made uh, several uh, attacks against your behavior as prime minister. Uh, now, uh, given what happened, uh, do you think that uh, this was a way uh, to threaten you, and uh, that this means there might be further attempts on your life? Well, firstly, uh, Mark, the uh, press conference which the uh, 
head of the ISI did was very unadvisable. No ISI head should do a press conference because if I reply, replied to it point by point, I think the institution of the army would be damaged, and that's not what my what I would like to do because we do need a strong uh, defense force here. But I think the press conference was also in response to this our best investigative journalist who was portraying my point of view. He had been threatened with, with death. He left the country and actually was assassinated in Kenya. And there was a big public backlash and people pointed fingers at the establishment. And I think the I felt that the press conference was more to uh, placate the public opinion. Right. Uh, but uh, again, uh, now we're nearly two weeks after. Uh, I imagine you've beefed up your uh, security. Uh, do you feel uh, under a threat of assassination? Do you think that they will try again to do what they failed to achieve? Well, unfortunately, Mark, I do think that they could try again because, uh, you know, the threat remains those people who wanted me eliminated. The reason why they want me to be eliminated is my party is by far the most popular party in Pakistan. We have won 75% of the by-elections despite the government party, uh, the, the, the ruling party, all the parties put together, backed by the establishment. Despite that, we have swept the by-elections and the popularity has gone up, basically because people do not want these criminals who are ruling Pakistan right now. 61% of the cabinet has corruption cases against them. So that's why I have massive public support. And I think they think that the only way to, to, uh, to get me out of the way is actually eliminate me. So I think that there is a threat still. Well, this begs the question. You said uh, you called on your supporters to resume uh, the march uh, towards the capital Islamabad. And you said that you would rejoin it health permitting, uh, this begs the question, are you ready uh, really to do so given the dangers you just described? Well, you know, Mark, the thing is, uh, I am a firm believer uh, in, 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 uh, in my faith, which says the time, you know, death is, is in the Almighty's hands. You know, we take pre precautions. I will take more precautions than before, but that is not going to stop me, the fear of death, is not going to stop me from pursuing what I believe is a mission to fight for rule of law in this country. This is the big problem we have. We have uh, institutions that are above law. We have these uh, political mafias which are above law. And that's the reason why the country can't prosper. So this is 26 years ago I started my movement for justice and rule of law. And, you know, the, the threat of being killed is not going to stop me from... Uh, resuming this uh, mission. You want immediate elections. The government says no. The polls are planned for October uh, 2023. Uh, so by asking your supporters to march, aren't you uh, maybe uh, preparing the ground for violence? Uh, some are even saying a uh, potential civil war in Pakistan. Look, Mark, I have been in politics for 26 years. Always I have remained within the Constitution. The Constitution gives me my right for peaceful protest. Our protests have always been peaceful. This march is going to be what our Constitution allows us to peacefully protest against what is going on in Pakistan right now, where a cabal of crooks have taken over the country. I repeat, 61% of them are on bail from corruption cases. And the worst is that our economy has tanked. We have the risk, the, the risk of default in Pakistan when I left was 5%. Today it is 75%. So the country is facing a looming economic crisis. All we want is to get out of this thing, th th these crises are free and fair elections. But the point is, personally, it doesn't matter to us whether the elections are right now in a month, in a year's time. We will win anyway because... No party has ever had this mass support which we have right now. But the point is the country cannot afford to go on as it is. And hence the peaceful protest 
for free and fair elections. Last question, uh, Mr. Khan. After you were, you were removed as prime minister through a parliamentary vote of not confidence in April, you accused the United States of colluding with Pakistan's elite to topple you. But recently, you said, well, no, uh, I didn't really mean that, and this is be behind me. Is this because you had no evidence for uh, what you say, or even as some of your foes are saying, that you invented what they describe as a conspiracy theory? Well, Mark, number one, the, what, there, there's a cipher, a conversation, which uh, a secret cipher, a conversation between our ambassador in New York, in Washington, and the U.S. Under Secretary of State Donald Liu. Now, according to that cipher, Donald Liu is telling our ambassador that unless you remove Imran Khan as the prime minister, there will be consequences for Pakistan, and remove him in a vote of no confidence. The next day, the vote of no confidence is tabled, and suddenly the government which, by the way, was performing economically, we were performing best in 17 years. We had the best 6% economic growth rate. From there, our government was toppled. Now, what I actually said was that that is behind me. I should not, just because my government was toppled by the U.S., I should not let that get in the way for what is in the interest of people of Pakistan. And interest of people of Pakistan is to have good relationship with all countries, but especially the U.S., which is a superpower. So that's exactly what I said. I never backtracked on this because it, the, the cipher exists. It was put in front of the cabinet. It was put in front of the National Security Council. It is now with the chief justice where we wanted him to hold an independent inquiry. So there was no question of backtracking on that. Just as a it was a question of moving on. I, I understand. Just as a last question, health-wise, uh, uh, when are you hoping uh, to walk again? Well, uh, Mark, I have three bullets taken out from my right leg. And the one that is bothering me is that one that has cracked my shin bone. And so I really can't put weight on my uh, leg until, until that heals, which is about four weeks. Imran Khan, I want to thank you very much uh, for appearing here on the France 24 interview uh, from Lahore in Pakistan. Thank you very much for watching it.